There you go. Hi everyone, welcome back to Fighting Spirit Film Festival 2022. I have a special guest with me. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Jessica Sanders. I'm the uh, director, producer, and writer of the short film, The Cocktail Party. Yourself and Charlotte wrote the script for The Cocktail Party. How did the idea come about? What was the writing process like? Um, good question, because it's also a script that was a page and a half, ended up being a four minute film, but there's no dialogue. So it's all like action writing. Um, but the inspiration started because Charlotte Tasha, my lead actress, um, used to be a, like a, a cocktail waitress um, on the side at like homes and kind of, I think we've all experienced this, whether like people abuse wait staff poorly or people, you know, I'm, I'm interested in class and kind of like um, how that can play out um, and like small microaggressions and um, so one is like if you're serving at a party, you can see how people might possibly treat some people differently. Um, I don't agree with that, but obviously it happens. And then specifically, somebody did spill red wine on her carpet at her house and didn't say anything about it. And I just, that's like such a good inciting incident for a film of like rage. <laughs> and also just like shows how people are careless and selfish and um, like what, what would we all want to do in a moment, like when we're confronted with this kind of, you know, selfishness. That brings to mind a story. Um, I was waitressing at this really fancy place. I don't remember. I remember in like some like central London and um, this elderly man kept asking me questions and about my race. He was like, um, you're Filipino. Oh, my like nurse is Filipino. And I was like, please tell me you're not trying to hire me as <laughs> next nurse because I have a film degree that's not going to be helpful for help, like nursing anyone. It's uh, that's that's embarrassing on his part, I would say. <laughs> I, yeah, nursing is not the same as writing essays on no. freeway film. It's not the same. Yeah, definitely not. Can you tell us about what it was like on set? What was the first day like? And were there any particularly challenging days? Um, we did 70 setups into, I think, 10 hour days, which is insane. It's like, it was almost like origami, how we shot it. It was like so precise on um, Larkin's and I incredible and um also because i was on set on march 14th when the pandemic happened and the shutdown i had heard all the people you know booked all the gear we were on I was crying and i'm like mm, make it fall about a party this doesn't feel right so i actually sent everyone home so it, i had to re-raise the money which was ended up being fine but um but by the time i was actually shooting i was so well prepared because i pre prepped the mo the four minute movie for a year and a half so um, it just was kind of like origami the way we shot it. It was just like, I just, I just knew every single shot we needed to get. And it's kind of like, there's no extra fluff and even how we edit it. It's just like, it was just shot like very specifically. Um, and it was just, it was so much fun. Eugenia Yuan plays the muse in the cocktail party where she dances with a jade ribbon that matches her clothing. Where did the idea come from to have this particular imagery in the film? Um, so Eugenia is an amazing actress. She's, she's American. And her mother is actually the godmother of martial arts. Her mother is Chang Pei Pei, who's in like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Come Drink With Me. Tarantino is a huge fan of her. She's amazing. So um, I had met Eugenia on a commercial that I directed like 10 years ago. And I was already a fan of hers as an independent film actress, but um, she had told me that she was a Olympic rhythmic gymnastics dancer with the ribbon. I had never even seen her do it until we were on set, but I was like, I'm going to put you in a movie one day. I don't know when. And like, it literally was like 10 years later. I was like, I know what the movie is. So like kind of including obviously Charlotte's story, but having Eugenia, it was like a huge part of the whole storytelling and um my costume designer stephanie Strait, she found that amazing kimono it's actually like from the 1920s that dress that she's in um and also i'm very 
interested in color and kind of color blocking and how color communicates. Um, so there's definitely like Charlotte's wearing like a yellow shirt that kind of evokes, you know, Bruce Lee. Um, and then the green of Eugenia, and then there's like pops of red. So there's kind of like a whole color palette to the film. And so that was just the green was a choice. And also I see Eugenia as a, as a muse, like a really like strong, beautiful, empowered, but also kind of gentle force um, that Charlotte um, kind of gets entranced by. And it just, it just kind of worked out. And again, like just filmmaking magic, like she had, just we happened to get this green chair in front of a painting that agree it's just like all we didn't even like necessarily consciously plan that but i think subconsciously it all came together and something like oh my god this is i feel like that's when like filmmaking starts clicking and all the different like choices with production design and um costume design and it just all kind of starts fitting together and it was it just it came together really well how did you collaborate with jake wang the stunt coordinator of the film and charlotte tashin on the action sequences. How did you plan the stunts and action sequences? Yeah, Jake is awesome. I highly recommend him. He's an experienced stunt like actor, but he also does um, fight coordinating. And he was a great collaborator because he definitely under, it took us a while because I've never shot martial arts or fighting before, but I'm not interested in like blood or like gore. Like I'm more interested in the Jackie Chan, like Stephen Chow action comedy, you know, playing with like slippers or dumplings. And so he was like great and really like understanding my vision and helping translate it. Um, and so like with Charlotte, we would also like look at different film clips, whether it was like Bruce Lee, mentioned Jackie Chan, just different things that like I got excited by, inspired by. Um, and we just like literally would go through that location and just like reenact and try out different things and kind of like see how it felt to like you kind of have to do it to know if it works um and then like when we worked with jen um jen ko sung who's the chef like that like this whole footwork sequence which i love like um jake that was jake's idea like more i'm not always in the feet but he said that was more like hong kong style so it was just it was fun to kind of do more like throwback in terms of our fight choreography and Again, like not make it bloody or gory, but like more playful. How did you assemble crew that you could entrust with your vision? Um, good question. So Patricia Seeley is my longtime producing partner. She's incredible. Um, Laura Ochoa, who was our production designer I've worked with before. Stephanie Strait, I hadn't worked with before. Larkin Siebler, DP, I'd worked with for like 10 years. So. I'm, I love working with like new people and, you know, people that I've had a history with, but like finding people always that like, I have a very open, safe, creative rapport. I like to like encourage creative ideas. It's like, for me, it's very much about collaboration. I feel like for me, filmmaking is, I always say it's like a symphony where you have, it's like music. We have all these different talented people. We make something even more beautiful and epic than I could have envisioned. So for me, that collaborative process is like my a happy place so I like to really like create a set that open dialogue like a safe open space for people to like do their best and like come with fun ideas and um just not be scared to like, you know explore things um but I definitely do have like a strong vision about it as well but it's um I I love collaborating for me that's like my favorite thing what are your favorite highlights of your career maybe receiving an award a really good day on set anything it's funny, one of my friends who's one of my screenwriters said this piece of advice, which I think is true. It's like, you have to enjoy the process because if it's about like being on stage or being at a film festival or winning an award, it's like, you have the process takes forever and it's such a long journey that like you have to enjoy every step. So honestly, like, like for this film, for instance, it is like one of my, like it's my most recent creation, but I love it so much. And it was like, even working with like the composer, it's all drum score. Like that was so much fun. Or um, Aaron Glasscock, who did our sound mix, he was nominated for an Oscar for Birdman. Like I was blown away by, he brought this whole like oral soundscape. So, I mean, I just, like I said, I love creating and collaborating. So for me, that like brings me joy. So yeah, I don't like, I mean, I do like, it's, I like winning awards, <laughs> you know, I, I'm glad that this film has been recognized, but um. 
but like for me it's really like the creating part and then also it's fun to like screen it and have like an audience laugh or react which we got to do a couple times with this film and it's like so much fun to have like that reaction I love and lastly how has your experience been with Fighting Spirit Film Festival um I am so honored that Fighting Spirit you know recognized this film with two awards I think best short film and also best lead actress but you know unfortunately I'm not in London so I couldn't be there but I've been like so impressed um and I feel like included in this really cool martial arts community that I didn't really know about um and it's so awesome to know that there's a festival that just celebrates the art of martial arts um and I hope to get to London one day to be there with you guys to screen um your films but um I just, you guys seem very classy and like super experienced and it's been a total pleasure working with you guys. So I'm like, thank you so much for supporting the film and the filmmakers and like really creating a community, especially in this crazy COVID time. Um, community is so important. I, I do feel like part of this community. So thank you. And now time for the speed round. So for this, you pick one film for each category. Okay, I didn't like prep any of this stuff. Okay. So I'm really bad at like, like fast, like come to mind stuff, but I'll try my best. What film has the best soundtrack? Ooh, the best soundtrack. I mean, I'm thinking of some like Tarantino movies right now. I'll, I'll say Kill Bill because I just recently, I've been watching that a lot for, for this, this kind of work that I'm doing. What underrated film do you think deserves more attention? Underrated film. Um, I'm a huge fan of John Waters, but I don't know if they're that underrated, but like Hairspray is one of my favorite movies of all time and I think should be required viewing for everybody. What is your favorite film by your favorite filmmaker? Uh, uh, Fellini's Nights of Tiberia. Your favorite person, what is their favorite film? My favorite person? Um, well, my dad is like one of my best, is a best friend of mine, and he's also my mentor as a filmmaker, and he loves De Sica's The Bicycle Thief, which is like an Italian neorealist film, and that's a beautiful film. And lastly, which cinematic universe would you like to live in, e.g. the Grand Budapest Hotel, X-Men, MCU? Um, honestly, I like the cocktail party. <laughs> when we were shooting it, I was like, I want to go to this party in real life. This is the wackiest party, you know, with like some ribbon dancer performing and Brandon Coleman performing on the piano. So I like stuff that's like playful, colorful, um, has good food, good drinks, like good people part of it. Um, and is like kind of joyful. And that's the end of the interview. Thank you so much.